Welcome back to Utah's Gentleman Farmer. I'm Randy Vaudry, and we are preparing for the apple season. We had a really pleasant, nice spring, and the result, though, can, can be uh, negative on that because what happens is the frost, if it hits at the right time, it'll take out some of your blossoms. And so you don't have a ton. They do a little bit of the thinning of the apples for you. But this year, because we didn't have a well-timed frost when the blossoms were on, we have a lot of apples. And so we have to take care of that. You do want a lot of apples, but if you have too many, you end up with small apples that are relatively flavorless. So what we want to do, at, while the apples are very, very tiny, we want to thin those apples out so that the tree pushes a lot of energy into a smaller number of apples. That way, come this fall when we're picking the apples, this is a Red Delicious, we'll get very big, beautiful uh, apples that are just delicious. So to get ready for the season, we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of thinning of those apples manually. I'll show you a little bit of how to do that. It's very simple if you understand what you're doing. And then you can get those beautiful, awesome apples. We have two here, they're fairly similar, so it's not really gonna matter. We've got, again, three up here. These are the smaller ones. So we'll get rid of them. Up here we have this cluster. It's not a developmental cluster. All of the apples look really small and not well developed. So I'm going to just go ahead and clip all of these. Up here we have our standard three cluster. This is the larger, better looking one, largest and better looking one. So we'll get rid of those. And again, up here, we have the same thing. Three, these smaller ones we're gonna get rid of. So you also have to go by how much weight is one of these little twigs going to deal with if you leave all the apples on it. The other reason we do this is if we have some apples that are right by each other, as they grow, they're just gonna to be touching each other. Well, the codling moth really likes to lay their eggs where two apples are touching. So you're only encouraging more codling moth problems. So you're gonna to wanna to get rid of any apple that's next to your central apple that you do wanna keep. That way you're gonna have a better control of the codling moth problem. I didn't know about other places, but here in Utah, you have to control the codling moth problem. Now, I spray, and I don't like spraying any more than I have to to keep my apples uh, clean and worm free. However, I follow the state agriculture's uh, website where they track the codling moths and when they're coming out. And so I only spray uh, when they tell me to, which dramatically cuts back the number of times I have to spray. If you followed the instructions on the spray uh, canister, it would tell you to spray every seven days. But I don't spray anywhere near that because I follow the state website. I'm sure that you in your state have a website like that because codling moths come out in generations and so they track those generations for us they tell us when the generations are starting and so we only spray at the peak of the generations or at the beginning to the peak that's a wonderful way to lessen the amount of spray that you put down now there are some other ways you can bag your apples. I can't bag all those. Plus, it's a very tall tree. I wouldn't be able to bag most. However, if I wanted to, I could bag only the ones on the lower end. So why do we do all this? Well, in our previous segments, you'll notice that no one said they were doing this to save money. 
Now, if you're fortunate, you can do this and save money. Apples can be fairly expensive, especially later in the year. I pick my, a lot of my apples and I have an extra refrigerator in our basement and I put them in there and I can, if I handle the temperature right, uh, I, knew a, I knew a guy who worked in an apple warehouse and he said that they kept the temperature in the warehouse as close to freezing without getting to freezing. And if you do that, you can get them to last almost all year. Now last year I was able to get my apples to last clear to the new year. We don't do this necessarily to save money, but what we do it for is, number one, we can control what goes into our apples. A lot of people would prefer not to use a pesticide. There are some what we'd call green pesticides that are based off of soaps and things like that. I haven't found them to be very effective. I've also used traps, pheromone traps that are supposed to capture the codling moth um, so that they don't lay their eggs on the apples. I just haven't found those to be very effective. So I do use pesticide. Um, I, it's a chemical pesticide, but I think it's very effective. And if you stop using it well in advance, wash your apples, when you pick them and then wash them again before you eat them, you're pretty safe. Again, we're choosing to control what goes into our food. And that everyone gets to make their decision when they're doing stuff like this. Uh, you can call it homesteading, you can call it uh, gentleman farmer, but this is the key, is that you get to control your food. So I would like to end this segment uh, with a little bit of video showing my son processing apples. He makes a product that's really nice. It's basically just an apple chip and it's really delicious. It's simple. It's a really slick way of doing it and it'll be a great video. This little dilly, it's a... Uh, it slices, it peels, and it also cores the apples. So it's really it makes it really simple. You can put it, uh, you can um, do a bunch of apples all at once. And then you set them out on these drying sheets, and uh, we'll show you how that runs in just a little bit. So let's see in more detail how he does this. So you just pull that back dab the apple onto it, really quite simple. And then you start turning it. And it is just so slick. I remember when we had to peel and then slice and then take and pulls the core off as you can see. And it also cuts the individual slices, or does it? It doesn't cut them. Oh. That's why I have this knife, because I just cut one side, and then it gives me the full rings. And so we have this dryer here that has how many layers? Four four layers. We're making short work of this, or I should say Randall is making short work of this. This would normally, before these core and uh, peelers, this would be an all day ordeal, just trying to get all these apples sliced, peeled and sliced. So we'll watch that again. Put it on there, start turning it. Doesn't have to be perfectly centered because that peeler is spring loaded. So it just goes with the pressure. Takes that core off. <clears throat> it is so simple. Now these are uh, Red Delicious apples. That, uh, I have, we have two Red Delicious trees. And then we have 
one golden delicious tree. Um, but the red delicious seem to dry better, can better. So this usually takes, what, 24 hours? No, it's 12 hours. It's too, 12 hours? If you like them crispy, if you like them kind of uh, yeah, softer, yeah. then you can do 8 to 10 hours. I know some people will put cinnamon or brown sugar or stevia on. I know other people will do lemon juice oh. because it helps with the coloration, but I don't care about that. It keeps it from going brown, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, because apples go brown pretty quickly. Like I said, we have we have a, two dryers going here, or that we will have going here. We'll be able to dry quite a few apples. So as you can see, they're all nicely dried. They're almost as crisp as like a potato chip. They have a natural sweetness because they've taken all that fruit, condensed it down into a solid mass, and so even though there's no added sugar, but I just like the, the natural flavor and taste of them. I love the consistency. They're nice and crispy. Have a good amount of sweetness in them. Natural sweetness. Nothing needed to be added. They're an excellent, healthy treat for your kids, for you. Anyway, it's such a simple process, especially if you have the tools that we've shown. Like we showed last night, we did eight trays in what, a matter of 15 minutes? And then the dryer does the rest. Does it overnight, you get up the next morning, and you've got some really good sweet apple tree. <laughs> I'm going to keep that clip and put it at the end. You know I'm boring you, but when the camera falls asleep, pretty bad. Okay.